Okay, just gonna do a video responding to Jack Smack 77 and his wicked mocking and attacking of biblical repentance. Gonna show you a verse of scripture real quick that really kind of ties into this. It's in uh, it's in Jude. Jude one and uh, trying to find the exact verse. Jude one seventeen and eighteen. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, 18, how that, there should, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who shall walk after their own ungodly lusts. Hmm, kind of like Jack Smack playing uh, Grand Theft Auto V, walking after their own ungodly lusts. Another verse of scripture to tie into this. Uh, is it? Proverbs 14 and verse nine. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. So you're going to see here he's a fool. He's making a mock at sin. He's mocking biblical repentance, repenting of sins in a sense of, because when I say repenting of sin, I mean coming to God in godly sorrow for your sins, for godly sorrow for sinning against a holy righteous God. Remember Revelation 15.4 and 1 Samuel 2.2 are clear that God is the only one that's holy. Okay, so you come to God in godly sorrow, like the uh, publican had in the parable in Luke 18, verses 9 to 14, and you repent. That's repentance, godly sorrow for your sins. And you're going to see he's mocking that in this verse, I mean, this verse, video. So let's, let's play this, and a little vexation warning to you, by the way, because he's a mocker. He's a child of Satan. He is mocking just like his father, Satan. So let's watch this. Good evening. This is Ricky Repentance. Pastor Ricky Repentance. I'd like to open up with repentance and then no verses. <laughs> you need to repent of your sins to be saved. You don't need Jesus. Jesus accomplished nothing. Um, when have anyone who taught biblical repentance said that Jesus, they, they don't need Jesus, that Jesus accomplished nothing? See, so just mocking there. That's all he's doing. He's a child of Satan. He's mocking the biblical doctrine of repentance, like in Jude one eighteen says. At the cross. When he died, it didn't do anything for anybody. It was a waste. Okay, it was abortive. You just need to repent of all your sins. We don't need Jesus. Forget Jesus. Throw him in, throw him out. You know, I saw this track on the ground yesterday. It said, Jesus saves. I just picked it up and wadded it up and threw it in the toilet and flushed it. Because we don't need Jesus. We don't need the gospel. We don't need grace. Just repent of all your sins. <laughs> repent of your sins. Be good like me. This Jesus guy, forget it. Forget him. Cut it out of your Bible. Erase the word Jesus out of your whole out of the Bible every time you see it. Because we don't need Jesus. We don't need to believe in Jesus. Just repent of all your sins. Jesus who? <clears throat> That's all you need to do is just repent of all your sins. And then you get to go to hell with me and everyone else who rejects Jesus. Who doesn't need Jesus. We just need to repent of all our sins. And then we get to burn in hell forever. Anyone else who teaches repenting your sins for salvation, they get to burn in hell forever, too. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that little um, little child of Satan, okay? So what he's saying is basically anyone who says biblical repentance, teaches biblical repentance, or just says anything about having to repent, is in hell. Well, I guess, he, I guess uh, Peter and Paul, the apostles Peter and Paul, I guess they're in hell, too, because uh, they preach repentance as well. Let me show you that. Here is Peter preaching repentance. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when, uh, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Hmm. So I guess the apostle Peter, I guess he's a, a hell bound as well. I guess he's you know currently in hell because he preached repentance for salvation. Uh, another verse of Peter preaching biblical repentance. Uh, sorry, it wasn't uh, First Peter chapter three. I think it's uh, verse nineteen. Uh, sorry about that. I think I got the wrong verse. 
Second Peter. Nope. I know it's in one of the epistles of Peter. I'm just trying to remember where it is. I think it's, uh, uh, sorry about that. I'm trying to find out where it is. Is it? Here it is. Second, it was Second Peter three nine. Not sorry, not First Peter three nine. Second Peter three nine. Um, First Peter, Second Peter three nine. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hmm. So according to Jack Smack seven seven, I guess Peter, I guess he's in hell too, apparently, because. He said that God wants all to come to repentance. This is also a really good verse to use against the Calvinists, the hyper-Calvinists, who say that basically God is only calling the elect to be saved and that God, you know, doesn't want everyone to be saved. Um, God wants all, all should come to repentance, not just the elect. So just had to point that out too. It's a good verse to use against Calvinists. But what about Paul? I guess he's in hell too, because he also preached a biblical repentance. Let me show you that. Acts 17, verse 30. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. And again, another good verse to use against the Calvinists, the, Cal the uh, heresy of Calvinism, because again, God wants all men everywhere to repent. He's not, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, but again, he wants everyone to repent. Hmm. Uh, Acts 20, verse number 21. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God hmm, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Interesting. So it seems like repentance and faith are not the same thing. So it's not just turning from unbelief to belief. Acts 26, verse 21. Uh, oops, not 26.21, it is Acts 26.20, sorry, Acts 26.20. But showed first unto them of Damascus and Jerusalem, and through all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, and what's he showing them? That they should repent and turn to God, and do works meet for repentance. A good verse for a changed life after salvation, works meet for repentance. But he's preaching repentance to them. Now what is repentance of sins? Uh, 2 Corinthians 7, beginning at verse 8, down to verse 11. For though I would ma though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, even though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Verse 9, Now I rejoice that not that ye were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Verse 10, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. To salvation, repentance to salvation. Yes, repentance is part of your salvation. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Verse 11, for behold this self same thing, that you sorrowed after a godly sorrow, that carefulness uh, it wrought in you, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge, in all things ye have reproved yourselves to be clear in this matter. What is repentance of sins? You have godly sorrow over your sins for sinning against a holy, righteous God. Again, Revelation 15, 4 and 1 Samuel 2, verse 2, it's clear that God is the only one that's holy. We're not holy without Jesus Christ and his righteousness given to us at the cross. And you can see uh, Philippians uh, 3, 9, 2 Corinthians 5, 9, 19 to 21, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 30, Romans chapter 4, verses 6 to 12, Romans chapter 4, verses 21 to 25, and uh, other scriptures too, which deal with the thing of imputed righteousness, contrary to the self-righteous lordship salvation uh, heretics who want to deny that and, and continue in their discussing self-righteousness. Um, what about Jesus Christ? Because... Jack Smack just condemned Paul and Peter to hell because they both preach repentance. What about Jesus Christ? Well, Mark chapter 2 and verse 17. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Sinners to repentance. 
Um, Luke chapter 13, where is that? Luke 13 verses 3 to 5. I tell ye nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. I'm going to hold my mouse there. Uh, verse 4. Are those 18 upon the tower, upon whom the tower of Siloam fell, and slew them? Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? Verse 5. I tell ye nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Hmm. So I guess Jesus Christ, I guess he is, you know, I guess he's a, a, a work salvationist too, because he you know, taught repentance. I guess he's a false teacher too, because he taught repentance. Ridiculous. Um, repentance is part of your salvation. And anyone who denies that is a false teacher. Um, repentance is part of the gospel. Okay? Repentance is you come to the end of yourself. You realize you're a sinner. And then as a result, you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Okay? Like I said, salvation is not by your works. Okay? Salvation is by grace through faith. Okay? But then there's repentance that's part of the gospel. Okay? That's simple. So don't don't be deceived by Jack Smack seven seven. He's a he's a blasphemer. He's a mocker, and he's denying the fact that repentance is part of the gospel plan. Okay, repentance then faith. You, you repent towards God and faith towards Jesus Christ. So don't be deceived by Jack Smack seven seven. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.